Hey friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and today I'm going to show you how to pick up your guitar and play the intro riff to Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. And this is going to be an acoustic version, and it's going to be a simplified version of the riff. And what I mean by that are a few things. Is one, instead of playing it up here like Slash does, I'm going to be down here using, you know, the standard open D chord position. It makes it a lot easier. I'm also going to be simplifying a few of the notes. Now, to the average listener, you're not going to hear the difference, but this sort of lets you play it without sort of finger ninja skills, which are kind of impossible in certain cases. So I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to play this in standard tuning. Take note of that in case you want to play along with Guns N' Roses. But you put this all together, this will turn heads. This is a fantastically fun one to play, and it's something that you can really get the hang of in a few days if you give it some concerted, dedicated practice time. All right, so let's get to that lesson. As always, check out my website, playsongnotes.com, where you can find the notes and tabs for everything I'm going to show you in this lesson. It's a great thing to follow along with while you're watching, and also you can print out the tabs I have there and practice this, you know, day after day to sort of really master it if that's your goal. All right, with that said, let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I want to stress with this riff is there are these three main sequences that are like the building blocks of this riff. And these three sequences are all you'll need. And there's a few ways you can put them together. The first way looks like this, where you play sequence one, and you'll play it twice. Then you'll play sequence number two, and you'll play that twice as well. Then you'll play sequence number three, play it two times, and then you'll go back to sequence number one and play that two times, okay? And that whole thing will repeat. You can play that on a loop over and over again. That's what you hear at the beginning of the Guns N' Roses version. However, in this lesson, I'm also gonna show you this ending sequence, which sounds like this. Okay, so, I just wanted to call that out because basically there's sort of two ways to approach playing this. You can just play that first version where you're doing these three sequences sort of in a loop or this sort of second approach where you're adding in this ending. And the ending is a little bit difficult, but it is a cool little touch to add on if that's your goal. Okay, so with that said, let's dive in and look at these sequences and get you on your way. Okay, so the first thing I'll say is each of these three sequences is sort of based on a single chord shape. Okay, the first one is gonna use a D major chord. Okay, so that's the thinnest four strings. That's open, second, third, second, okay? And just really quick, let me say that the next chord shape is going to take that D major, and this is for sequence number two, and you're gonna lift up your middle finger and then put it down on the third fret on the fifth string, okay? And if you just play the fifth string, third string, and second string, okay? Those are the key notes you're gonna be playing. And then the third sequence is going to, all you're gonna change is use your middle finger down here on the third fret of the sixth string. And keep those other two fingers, your index and your ring finger, where they were. Now, I, I say this because check this out. For the D, which you use for sequence number one, and then for this chord, which you use for sequence number two, and for this chord, which you use for sequence number three, these two fingers are in the same spot, so you're not moving them. So that's important to keep in mind because when you know that these two fingers are staying still, all you're really worrying about is getting that middle finger down and down again, okay? So with that said, let's dive on into the finger picking pattern for each of these. Okay, so for the first sequence, we're basically gonna start off in that D major position. And the key here, as you look at this riff, is I wanna break this in half. The first four notes are basically so what we're doing there, let's look at the first three notes first actually. We're just playing the fourth string, second string, and third string of the D major chord. Okay, so thumb with my right hand, middle finger with my right hand on the second string, index finger on the third string with my right hand, okay? So practice this first. Fourth string, second string, third string. Fourth string, second string, third string. Ready, what I want you to do is add a fourth note, which is basically done by removing your index finger of your left hand. Okay, you see that? Going from this to this. So you get. So repeat that. Get comfortable with it, right? Because it's only going to get a little bit harder. But you want to have this as a foundational building block, okay? And then next, let's look at the back half of the measure, which are these four notes. One more time. 
So again, if you have your hand in the D major shape, all we're doing is putting our pinky down on the third fret of the first string, okay? And then we're playing the third string, which our index finger is on, second fret. And the third note is basically the high E string, with our, which our middle finger is on, so. Got that? So that's the last four notes. So if you combine this first sequence, and then you take the second sequence, that's the whole first thing, okay? So I will say the tricky part about this is you're gonna have to take your index finger off of the third string in that first half, but then you're gonna have to put it back on that note for the second half. Okay, you see that? So watch my index finger when I play this. I'm gonna play the first sequence on repeat now, slowly. And I will say, if you're practicing this for the first time, take it slow. If you're messing up, slow it down, okay? Because to get past the problem of making mistakes, the answer is not playing faster. You gotta slow it down, it might feel ridiculous, but do it at a speed where you can play it perfectly a few times in a row and then slowly crank up the speed. And I'm telling you, it won't come on the first day. For me, this was many, many days of practice and then you know, I'll sort of watch hockey in the background and just play this over and over again without thinking about it, right? And eventually you can get here. All right, so that's the first sequence and I'll tell you what, that's the toughest one, I think. The next two use a lot of the same skills and I think they're a little bit easier in certain ways. So let's check that out. For number two, we're gonna to get to that starting chord shape. All right, and we're basically gonna do the same four notes with the bass note being the only exception difference to start off with. So practice that. So once you get that, you'll move to the second half of the measure. And the second half plays the same strings as the first sequence did. I mean, you're going from first string to third string, first string to third string. But you're gonna have an open G string. That's one thing that's different. And one thing that's also different is you're gonna have to use your index finger here to get over to play the second fret on the high E string. So watch my hand slowly. my index finger is going from the third string to the first string and back to the third string and back to the first string again. Okay, that's one tricky thing is getting this index finger to do that, that you're gonna have to work out. But again, take it slow and get it. And then fortunately, the third sequence is basically the exact same thing you just played it's just your, your, your middle finger is down here on the bass note. Okay, so take it slow. All right, and then, so those are the three sequences really. So you have that first one, that second one, and that third one. And again, I implore you, Check out my website, get the tab, print it out, work on this, watch this lesson again, because it is tricky. But basically you take those building blocks, you put them together, and then you have the entire thing, where you play the first sequence twice, and then you play the second sequence twice, then you play the third sequence twice, and then you go back to the first sequence and play it twice. And then you repeat the whole thing, okay? So the last thing I'll show you is this ending riff. So to play this ending riff, you basically want to get your hand in a D position and get used to going to a D sus two, and then back to a D, and then to a D sus four, and then back to a D, okay? And then basically you follow the tab and you're going to be going from the highest string to the third string, second string to the third string, highest string, third, Okay. 
So get used to doing that, take it slow, and then basically on the one count of each measure, if you can, add in a bass note of the fourth string. So with that, you have the ending riff, and again, you just put it together where you do the first sequence, second th sequence, third sequence, two times each, and then you do this ending riff. And then you're good to go to repeat the whole thing. So that's all you need to play this sort of intro riff. If you want to hear a lesson for this full song, let me know. Again, I probably would default to an acoustic strum along version. I have nowhere near any kind of uh, elite guitar skills to start playing like Slash. And, uh, but there's other stuff online that can show you that. But thanks very much for watching. If this was helpful, definitely subscribe, tell a friend, and come back for more. I'm putting out new lessons all the time. But this has been David Potts with Song Notes. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye, my friends.